Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. We want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we don't have to leave anybody on hold. Hate, hate leaving folks on the line at the end of the program. So please call in early at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, something you may have heard about or read about, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to my website, brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Also, pharmacistben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Got lots of websites for you. Boy, uh, post regularly. Got blog posts as well as news stories and videos. Uh, Got a bunch of new videos at criticalhealthnews.com. Doing one on acne this week. We did one on diabetes last week. And, of course, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. You can also call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel made with 5% Retinol, a bunch of vitamin C, cholesterol, fullerenes, really neat ingredient that I don't talk too much about, fullerenes, buckyballs, they call them, super high-tech antioxidant as well as uh, fatty acid, transdermal esters, no irritation. Most people can use our retinol 5% gel, which is a little flaking, sometimes a lot of flaking actually, but no irritation, no redness. And uh, that's saying something, folks. Retinol is a super, super, super important ingredient, but the way it's used in most skincare formulations, most skincare formulations really don't understand skincare formulation, unfortunately, at least from a pharmacy perspective. And if you've tried to use a retinol or retinoic acid product in the past and had irritation or couldn't use it, I really encourage you to check this out. TruthTreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Okay. Welcome to the Bright Side. Once again, we're talking the ketogenic diet and fats and fatty vitamins. Last program, we talked about veggies, veggies and breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal to skip, as I say, and this is something you're going to be hearing about more and more in the coming years. Skip breakfast, miss breakfast. Our ideas about breakfast are more based on marketing and advertising than they're based in health. Think about it. You're sleeping all through the night, six, seven, eight, nine hours, and you're in a fast. You're basically fasting. Your body is in a ketogenic mode. It's producing ketones. It's cranking out the ketones, super powerful molecular entities that fuel the body. And it's kind of a bummer to lose this opportunity to lose weight and to access the mega power of these ketones. Eating anything first thing in the morning can affect this head of steam, this head of ketogenic steam that we build up throughout the night. But when we eat the sugar and the refined carbs that make up the the bulk of our standard American breakfast, that really messes things up. The body is in a fasting state. It's in a low blood sugar state. And when you put carbs in the, into the system, first thing in the morning, it's like a dry sponge sucking up water. It just sucks those carbohydrates up. So now instead of generating these powerful ketones, we become mega fueled with sugar. And as this occurs over the course of years and decades, beginning for most of us in infancy, 
for many of us, we become sugar burners. We learn to become sugar burners. Our biochemistry, our intelligent biochemistry becomes a sugar burner. Fat gets retained, fat gets stored instead of being used. Our insulin levels get all whacked out. And from there, it's a short, heart, uh, a short hop to to insulin resistance and obesity and heart disease and diabetes and all the other unpleasant signs of dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. Last January, a study was published in the, a very scary study, I might add, was pu uh, published in the clinical journal of, uh, of the American Society for Nephrology, that's kidneys, and they found that uh, uh, kidney disease, kidney stones, which are a classic sign of messed up blood sugar, is on the increase in children. Yes, in children and teenagers, especially African-American kids. This is a very bad sign. Kidney stones, first of all, kidney stones are one of the most miserable experiences anyone could ever endure. But, but just as bad, they indicate major, not minor, major blood toxicity. And until recently, you had to be old to get kidney stones, or at least you had to be an adult to get kidney stones. You had to have decades of trashing your body, trashing your blood. And when I say trashing your blood, I mean literally trashing your blood to get to, uh, get to kidney stones. Now kids are getting it. Kidney stones and kidney disease, they're, they're a mystery. The medical model will tell you they're a mystery. Oh, they're calcium. Oh, it's ta stop taking your calcium supplements. Oh, it's oxalic acid. It's the oxalates in spinach. No, it's not. It's dirty blood, period. It's acidic blood. It's crappy blood from blood sugar issues and nutritional deficiencies. And it's intimately linked to sugar pops and Captain Crunch and granola bars and Coke and Pepsi and Pop-Tarts and Danish and all these wonderful foods that compose the standard American diet and, and specifically the standard American breakfast. If you want a good reason for the alarming rise in obesity and diabetes and kidney stones and kidney disease in children, children, five-year-old kids, yes, obese five-year-old kids, you need look no further than the standard American breakfast, which is not in our health interest. It's in companies' interests. It's in global company interests. It's in profit margin interests. If you want to, you're looking for a reason. It's no mystery. It's the standard American diet and the standard American breakfast, particularly, which over the last 50 years or 60 years has devolved into this sugar palooza of pancakes and French toast and syrup and probably worst of all, the nutritionally obscene candy breakfast slash cereal dessert, whatever that is, Captain Crunch and Cookie Monsters and whatever they got now. You know, you walk down the aisle, walk down the cereal aisle someday. There's hundreds of these things, Fruit Loops and Sugar Crisps and Fruity Pebbles. And what do you think that's all about? Profit margins. The profit margins on these things are ungodly. The history of the modern breakfast cereal is this fascinating and disgusting at the same time story of marketing and advertising and, and this classic example of how we are manipulated, how our health is manipulated, how the health of our children and our families are manipulated by these multinational corporations whose interests are 180 degrees different from our interests as human beings. It's the corporation versus the human being. That's, uh, where have you heard that before? It seems to be a running theme, but it's really egregious when it comes to how we feed our kids and how we feed ourselves. Contrary to popular belief, by the way, early Americans were not big breakfast eaters. You know, you always see the, the kind of stereotype of the, the colonial family sitting around the table eating their sausage and bacon and eggs. That didn't happen. In the 1700s and in the early 1800s, Americans didn't eat breakfast. They woke up and they chopped wood. Life was hard on the frontier. They didn't have time to sit and have a nice leisurely breakfast. They woke up in the morning, they went straight to work. They chopped wood and they carried water and they did all the other chores that were required in uh, colonial and post-colonial America. Later on, as we started to accumulate some wealth, they might have started off their day with a little beer or hard cider. It was a little, life was tough back then. You had to have a little beer or hard cider to start your day off. Maybe they had some corn mush or wheat meal mush. But by the mid-1800s, things were starting to change. That's where, where we started to get some money. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue this when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for joining us. Our number 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, love hearing those. Or if you want to just contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can head over to brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. We'll have to have you on our team. We can help you build a business, build a nice healthy business or just a small business if you like. Or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can be a distributor. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team, phone team, and they can tell you all about it. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. So, contrary to popular belief, our early American ancestors did not eat a big breakfast. It wasn't until like the mid-1800s that we started to get some bread and some cold meat, maybe, they used to eat something called scrapple, which is this disgusting concoction of, of mushy cornmeal and head cheese, which is not cheese at all, but head. Yes, literally head, where they would put a head in a pot and cook it down. It's basically just cartilage and gelatin. That was kind of like a staple in certain parts of the country in the 1800s. Well, Americans started to eat cereals somewhere in, somewhere in the mid to, 1800, mid to late 1800s, but it was mostly porridge and gruel, and they would take grains and add some milk or water, and it would take a lot of time, and they would cook slowly. In the south, they would eat corn grits. In the north, they would eat oatmeal porridge. In other parts of the world, they would eat kashi, or uh, China, they ate something called kangi. In Africa, they ate something called pap. It was all basically just grain and mush, and they would cook it over, over a fire over a long period of time. But, uh, but Americans weren't just eating cereal, by the way. It wasn't just porridge. They were also starting to eat protein. By the mid-1800s, they were eating uh, oysters and veal and meat and eggs along with their porridge. That was what breakfast really consisted of in the, say, 1860s and 1870s, around Civil War time. The first ready-to-eat breakfast cereals were developed in the late 1800s. That's when food industrial, the, the food business met the Industrial Revolution. By the early 1900s, the breakfast cereal business really got going. These super high-tech machines, at least for the time, super high-tech machines, they were called extrusion machines. And this was a major advance in food processing. Food extrusion machines were basically turn corn into mush, and then they pumped air in it, and then they pushed it out of tubes. And this extrusion process kind of, this is where, chip, this is where uh, uh, flakes came from and, and puffs came from. Flakes and puffs were the first cereals. Actually, the first real cereals were really hard substances. This was in the, before the extrusion machines. A guy named Kellogg and a guy named Post, as in C.W. Post and the Kellogg's company. These guys weren't industrialists. They were more like health advocates. And they kind of thought they, they, were, they started to market breakfast cereals as health foods. And health, breakfast cereals were considered to be health foods back then. But it wasn't long before financial interests and industrial processing kicked in. And the Kellogg's company and the C.W. Post company started to realize that these were the descendants of uh, Mr. Kellogg and Mr. C.W. Post, they started to realize that they could sell air, basically, with these extrusion machines. They could sell air and a little bit of grain and stick it in a box. And then with advertising, which was just starting to get going, they could sell it as a, as a breakfast food. The first cereals were shredded wheat and corn flakes, which were basically just some grain with a lot of air. And they sold them to women. They told women that they could feed their families with this ready-to-eat breakfast box cereals and free up their time for whatever time, whatever they were doing back then, I don't know, cleaning their kitchens. I don't know what women were doing back then because they were staying in the house. They weren't going out and working. So they had more time to clean the kitchen and do their laundry by serving these breakfast cereals. But it wasn't really until the 1940s that our modern breakfast cereal really started to get going. A guy named James Rex, who was a salesman in Pennsylvania, noticed that his kids were putting a lot of sugar on their puffed rice. And so he started experimenting. Pretty soon, he came up with this invention he called Ranger Joe's Coated Popped Wheat Honeys, which was, were these little particles of wheat 
that uh, had a bunch of sugar on them, and he sold the he ended up selling his company to his, his company to the Post Company. They changed the name of his popped wheat honeys to Sugar Crisps, and the candy slash cereal industry was off to the races today. Thirteen billion dollars of this stuff is sold, and considering it's just sugar and a lot of air and a little bit of vitamins and so tiny touch of grains, that is big, big, big time profit margins. And I know, by the way, when I compare veggies to these kinds of breakfast foods, you know, and the breakfast foods we eat today, banana, blackberry, double dip, French toast, that's what they sell at Denny's, I think. You know, you can't compare salads and, and fish and broccoli to these kinds of foods. I'm not, I'm not being a food Nazi here. I'm just talking about health. If we are serious about being strong, if we are serious about, about being healthy, if we're serious about reversing diabetes, which is 100.00% reversible, 100% reversible. Yes, the leading cause of death in this country, diabetes, when you factor in its relationship to heart disease and cancer, is 100% reversible. If we're serious about reversing this thing, diabetes and heart disease and IBS and autoimmune disease and Crohn's disease and all the other miserable ways that we fall apart, if we're serious about staying out of the doctor's office, if we're serious about keeping our gallbladders, if we're serious about not having our bodies carved up, these are simple things we can do. I'm not being a food Nazi here. I know it's a tough sell to compare broccoli to blackberry chocolate, double dipped, brioche French toast. I know that's a hard sell. But if we're sick, these are options for us. It's not that our bodies are not capable of reversing diabetes. They are. Our bodies are capable of reversing diabetes, never to be seen again. But not if we're eating at IHOP, and not if we're eating at Denny's, and not if we're eating Captain Crunch and orange juice for breakfast. That's why I get so ticked off at the pharmacomedical model, which needs us to be sick. It needs us sick. It needs us to be wards of the state. That is so egregious. That's such a slap in our face. Our bodies are fully capable of reversing degenerative disease without the doctor, without the drugs. We just have to make these little changes. The only knock on eating veggies for breakfast is the taste. That's the only knock on them. And that's where we just have to be a little strategic. That's where we have to be a little clever because there's sugar in veggies. We can actually release the sugar in veggies. We can make our veggies sweet. If you apply a little heat, if you steam your veggies or you braise your veggies, you steam your broccoli or you braise your Brussels sprouts, you will release the heat. They will be delicious. Chop your Brussels, braise your Brussels sprouts in some coconut oil, chop them up fine. It'll be like Brussels, Brussels sprouts chips and sprinkle a bunch of salt on them. They will be delicious. Put your favorite spices on them. Same with broccoli. And you can always amp up the nutritional power of veggies if you mix them up with fat. Fat and veggies go together. Butter and coconut oil with your veggies. A lot of the nutritional value in vegetables is locked up in uh, in cell, uh, cellulose and it's hard to release but if you mix them up with fat and you steam them you'll release those nutrients and by the way this is really important for women as they get older because these fats are super important for the skin and as women get older particularly as we all get older but particularly women they don't absorb their fats women don't absorb their fats as effectively all right hang tight we'll finish up when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side we'll be back after this Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about veggies and the ketogenic diet, how you can use veggies. For women, it's especially important to combine fats with veggies, especially postmenopausal women. Postmenopausal women notoriously have problems absorbing fats, and this is one of the big reasons why their skin will start to thin and why their skin will become more sensitive to the sun. It's true about everybody, but it's especially true for women. That's why gallbladder issues tend to happen in women or are more common in women after, uh, as they're approaching menopause and after menopause. So fat malabsorption issues and lousy skin, wrinkle, not lousy skin, but aging skin, we'll say, wrinkles and thinning skin and photo damage, these are intimately connected to problems with fats and problems absorbing fats and problems absorbing fatty substances that are found in vegetables that tend to protect the skin. 
Now, I've been in the skincare business a long time, folks. I've been formulating products in the pharmacy as a compounding pharmacist. I've been formulating consumer products. I've sold millions of dollars of my formulations. I just sold my company a couple years ago. Some of you may know this. I have a new company, The Truth. And let me tell you something. When we have lousy skin, the vast majority of our problems are not topical. They're internal. And when women have problems as they get older with wrinkles and dry skin and sunspots, etc., you're looking largely or in, at least a large component of it is deficiencies in fatty vitamins, deficiencies in phytonutrients, deficiencies in EFAs, deficiencies in the fatty substances that come from vegetables. And by the way, we talked earlier about how in the future you're going to hear more and more about how important skipping breakfast is. And we talked a couple days ago, I said how on the bright side and in my presentations and in my talks, I'm always telling you things that you're going to read about in the next five or 10 years. Talked about, I, I talked about vitamins and skincare, uh, topical vitamins and skincare in the 1990s. People did, thought I was crazy. They didn't know why you put vitamins on the skin. Today, it's common knowledge. I was talking about vitamin K and probiotics back in the 1990s. Nobody knew what they were. Today, I'm telling you, in the future, you're going to hear about how important it is to skip breakfast. And in the future, you're going to hear how important it is to put vegetables on your skin. Yes, topical veggies. I'm predicting for you, you will start to see topical veggies in skincare products because veggies contain phytonutrients that are amazingly important for the skin. But of course, we know that internally, you want to be using internal nutrients to take care of the skin. And this is why mixing up fats and veggies are so darn important to help release those fatty substances. Anyway, we'll talk about this. Uh, we'll continue talking about this tomorrow on the Bright Side. Got a, a bunch of calls I want to get to. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Glenn in Austin. Good morning. What's up, Glenn? How you doing? Hi, good morning, Ben. Um, first, just a quick comment. Um, my mom had been seeing a functional medicine doctor in California, and she'd been consuming uh, coconut oil and butter with her morning coffee and then the butter uh, yeah, later in the day, real butter. And then she went to the doctor, and they told her she had too much fat in her blood, mm. so she's not doing that anymore. So I think that's it has something to do with the absorption. But the question uh, it was... It had a lot to do with the absorption, and that's unfortunate that they told her that, but that's just how it is. W what's your question, Glenn? Uh, the other thing they told her is that she has... Uh, uh, unspecified elevated serum HCG C74. Okay. She's got an insulin problem and it, probably a hormone problem as well. But first and foremost, she has a, a blood sugar issue. She, how, is she, uh, how old is she, your mom? 74. Okay, yeah, you're looking classic blood signs of blood sugar problems. A fatty blood, HCG issues, all of those are, are signs that she's not processing sugar correctly. That's the first thing. Uh, well, that's the first thing you want to do, but most of the time we're not processing sugar correctly. There's also a digestive con component as well. So those are the two places that you want to work first and foremost. Get her on the ketogenic diet if you can, or as close to the ketogenic diet as possible, which is going to be low carb, high. You know, she's probably going to resist the fat, but as much as she can get, that's going to be in her interest. The, the trick is to get her energy without sugar. The sugar is what's messing her up. So uh, also you can use nutrients that help her process sugar, chromium, vanadium, the B-complex, sweeties from Longevity, Beyond Tangy Tangerine from Longevity. I'd be pounding the B vitamins, by the way. They're very helpful for all hormone issues. Ultimate EFAs, essential fatty acids, super important. Then moving on to the digestive system, in addition to restricting her calories as best as she can, as I've said so many times, when we, when we get into our 70s and 80s, it's tough to change your diet. You know, People are just resistant to doing it. So if you can get her to do more protein, that's a nice little hack to get into the blood sugar system to keep her weaner a little bit off of sugar. So mm -hmm. whey protein, perhaps, also hormone-free, of course, and also um, um, glutamine powder. Uh, there's, there is some glutamine in whey protein, but straight glutamine powder will help her wean her off of sugar, more fiber, more vegetables. Those are also good for weaning her off of sugar, plus they'll help with the digestive system. And then also uh, probiotics like the bioluminitely essence and fermented foods. She's got a food issue, a digestive issue, and a sugar issue, and that's how you want to regard that whole hormonal and hormonal problem, the HCG problem, as well as uh, the high uh, the high blood fats. It's a dietary problem and a sugar problem, a digestive problem, I should say, and a sugar problem, and that's how you want to approach that. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Good deal. Hey, thanks. Thank Bye. you so much, Glenn. Take care, buddy. All right. Let's move on to do, 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 let's go to Isaac in New York. Welcome to the bright side, Isaac. What's up, buddy? Yes, good morning, Ben. Good morning. I'm ben. Good morning. Um, I'm Isaac. Hello, Isaac. Um, yes. Um, over the past 10 years, I've been having loose stools only, so no solid stools. And the past 
couple of years, I developed what you call a fistula. Okay. Yeah. You've been eating the wrong food, my friend. A fistula is a sign that the connective tissue in the digestive system is breaking down and the intestine is starting to break down. And it is probably following all that irritation and inflammation that occurred from the loose stools. Uh, over the course of decades, as the loose stools continue, you're going to have inflammation and you're going to have a breakdown in the connective tissue. And that, that's where your fistula comes from. So, you got a, again, you got a food issue, Isaac. And I, it sounds, you sound familiar. Have we talked before? Yeah, we talked a couple of days ago, but I was at the end of, I called at the end of the show, so I didn't okay. really get a chance to, you Okay, know, give you, you got to work on the food, my friend. That is the number one place for you to work with your issues. The loose stools tell me, the chronic loose stools tell me that your body has been trying to eliminate something that it doesn't like. This is what loose stools really are about. The body uh, will eliminate things through the intestines, through the large intestine that it's trying to get rid of. Now, this can be something that's not being absorbed correctly, or it could be something that the body just doesn't like. So the best bet for you, my friend, is to do a food diary. Well, first to fast for a couple of days. Get yourself some Swero V. You can get that from Longevity. Do half a bottle every hour for 12 to 24 to 48 hours, somewhere in there, or even more if you like. Does, does, I feel like there's some, there may be, I don't know for sure, but there may be some solid. Um, does, does, does the Swero V like take out just liquid, like where I'm just passing liquid, or the, would, is it well, capable of passing well, like stools like that stuck to my colon wall? Yes, yes. What will happen is as you stop putting food in your stomach, your body will start to eliminate the stuff that's stuck to the walls when you stop putting food. If you're chronically putting food in there, it's not going to get a chance to clean out. You can also, by the way, go get a colonic, which is not a bad idea. You know what that is? A colonic? You might yeah. want to try a colonic also. You do need to clean your intestines out. There's probably stuff stuck to the sides, as you said. So, so fasting will help. The Swear V, I'll tell you a few in a second here. Let me just finish up and I'll tell you. Swear okay. V cleanse, food diary, elimination diet, eliminating problem foods. And that all is in, uh, including a fast as well. Then when you start adding foods, you're going to want to add foods very carefully. One food at a time and see what happens. Then, in terms of supplements, you're going to want to use the uh, probiotics, the Biolumin Nightly Essence. You're going to want to use the Ultimate Enzymes with all of your meals and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. There's a couple more things I want to tell you, Isaac, but i got to take a break, so don't go away, all right? A couple more th important ideas. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. back on the bright side isaac in new york my friend got to work on your food sir and if i were you with uh, how old are you isaac by the way 28 oh you're too young my friend too too young you yeah. really got to get this food thing under control you must have had you must have been going through this issue for your whole life since you were a kid right yes yeah, so, well since 18 no, I had to start. No, no, no. It started. It had to start way before that. So listen, you're eating the wrong food. So you got. And the, the good news is, you, is you're a young man. So you can definitely turn this thing around. You got to get to the bottom of the food problem. Do everything we just talked about before the break. The swear of you cleanse, fasting, food diary, elimination diet, probiotics, good bacteria, ultimate enzymes before all your meals, apple cider vinegar. Please do start doing some more veggies and fiber. Excuse me. Hang on a second. You want to make sure that you're. Uh, you're uh, doing veggie juices, homemade veggie juices. This should be the bulk of your, your caloric intake for a while, at least a week or so, or a couple weeks even, of homemade veggie juices, okay? Fiber ground up in a, a coffee grinder. Take your, co take your fiber and then uh, go get yourself some uh, uns uh, unsweetened almond milk and then maybe a little bit of stevia if you want it sweetened and then uh, add it to ground up flax seeds all right and then you're going to want to do that for, you're going to want to do that for uh, uh, after you fast anyway you're going to want to do that maybe once a day or so don't do too much at first because it may may really cause you to eliminate fast if you're not digesting you're not absorbing so start off slowly and then homemade vegetable juices. Try to do as much liquid food as you can in addition to the fiber from the vegetable juices, things like soups, chicken soup and bone soup, and then uh, also fermented foods. Focus on foods and restoring the health of the, of the intestine. The fistula is a sign that you had major inflammation and major irritation in there for a long time. So be kind and loving to your digestive system. Last but not least, 
please practice caloric restriction. Only eat when you absolutely have to eat. We talked about this yesterday. Move your attention to your belly. When you feel like eating, move your attention to your belly and check in with your belly and see if you want to eat from your belly. If you don't want to eat from your belly, you probably don't want to eat. So f- make sure you're, you're practicing caloric restriction. The good news here, Isaac, is if you do all this correctly, you're going to add years to your life. You're going to completely change the way you live and you're going to uh, reduce your, the likelihood of all kinds of degenerative diseases, which are inevitable if you continue on this road. Yeah, okay, I got that. Just one last thing. Um, yes, sir. Okay, as I was taking a shower, I, I realized, um, not to get graphic, like the fistula, which is dead tissue, I think one of the dead tissues is uh, from, from my skin. Like one of my skin is like flat and falling off. Like from my yeah. skin is, you're breaking down fast, Isaac. You may need to have that looked. I don't know. At this point, you may need some surgical intervention. I can't tell you that on the radio. Uh, that might be something you're going to have to look at. It's nothing you want to mess around with, though. I'm giving you I'm giving you strategies here for the long term, not for the short term. For the short term, you may have to do what you have to do. And, and again, on the radio, I can't really help you that way. Everything I told you is more for the long term for the rest of your life. Okay. Okay. If you have an acute problem, you may need to have that looked at. I can't, I can't address that here. Okay. Okay. God bless you, my friend. Good luck. Okay. All right. Hope everything works out for you. That's that's a, that's a bummer. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go to Barbara in Colorado. Hey, Barbara. Where are you in Colorado? Um, Lusa. Oh, good deal. Have we met? Yeah. We well, we haven't met, but we've talked before. What's going I, on? Um, well, I've I've got Crohn's disease. Okay. And um, I'd like to throw out a name to Isaac, if I may. Okay. Um, are you familiar with Layla Africa? Layla Africa? No, tell me about her. Dr. Layla Africa. Uh-uh. He's a, a black physician, and he's written a, a book called, it's an, uh, really interesting, Nutricide, The Nutritional Destruction of the Black Race. Oh, wow. And Nutricide. He, yeah. It's okay. A, a really, really, it falls right in line with everything you, you preach and talk about. I don't preach. And don't say that. I, I, don't well, I don't mean that in the religious way. Okay. You, in, you enlighten. Okay. I like to enlighten, not preach. But the guy, I'm going to get that book. I see it now. The Nutritional Destruction of the Black Race. That looks very fascinating. Okay, yeah. good. Isaac, if you're listening, Nutricide, The Nutritional uh, Destruction of the Black Race, Lalayla, L-L-A-I-L-A, Africa, A-F-R-I-K-A. Thank you for that, Barbara. Oh, absolutely. What's, okay. What's going on? How can we help you? Well, I've got Crohn's disease. I've had it most of my life. It didn't get diagnosed until I was 45 when they finally scoped me. Okay. And um, You must have had digestive think, misery your whole life, even before the diagnosis. Oh, absolutely. Of, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Just in misery. How old can uh, I ask you approximately? Did, how old you are approximately? Oh, I'm 54. Okay, good. Okay, so what are you doing? How, how's it going now? Oh, I, well, A, I started listening to you and started changing my diet, which has been huge. And then nice. I started seeing a functional medicine doctor okay. um, who's got me on a ketogenic diet. Very nice. Has, Good deal. It has made the world of difference. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, awesome. It, awesome. I, I feel so much better. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Um, I, don't, I eat once a day. Good and deal. And you're not suffering. Bad, you're, not, you're not struggling. No, 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 no. Yeah. And then it, that's no, awesome. I feel better than I've ever felt. Oh, praise um, I've God. Lost, I went from a size 16 to a 10. Oh, wow. A matter of three months. Just, oh, amazing. And, and really not changed my weight, but just the distribution You're leaned up. It. You leaned yeah. up. That's awesome. Are you lifting weights or and working out or anything? I am starting to I just tripped over my dog and dislocated my, my collarbone. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, when you get better. But, uh, you know, you know. But anyway, I had my doctor put me through a genetic test test for three different um, genes, the COMT, the MTHFR, and different... Uh, I, I'm not a big believer in those, as you probably know, but what's what's the bottom line here? Well, she talks about how to... Um, um, uh, it turned out I've got show signs that I can't get rid of mold or okay. Lyme here, disease. Here's the deal with... Been, here's the deal. I'm going to cut to the chase because i got a bunch of calls, Barbara, and you want to pass yeah. this along to your doctor, Okay. Your genes change with the environment. Genetic testing is meaningless because your genes change. As you change everything else, which you have control of, the genes themselves, you can't go in there and turn them on and off. But what you can do is you can change how you live your life. 
and then your right. genes will change. Your genes are a reflection of what you're doing, and you want to pass this Either to your doctor. Whatever. Mitochondria, just a, it's just gibberish. It's just a structure inside the cell. The point is, is that your genetics reflect your life, how you're living, with some exceptions. There's some, you know, eye color and things like that, although it may be that eye color can change too. But 80% or so of the genetics is refl- a reflection of what you're eating, what you're breathing, what you're drinking, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. All of it. You follow me? So when you do mm-hmm. a genetic test, that's not a reflection of your genes. That's a reflection of your life. And so what you want to do is you want to just not even pay attention to your genes. Just continue what you're doing. And your genes will ultimately re- become healthy. You know, I'm being simplistic here, but they'll be healthy okay. genes versus sick genes. Okay? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's right. It's reflecting that I had a lot of mold in my system, and I just moved back from Austin. And had was exposed to a lot of mold in Austin. What do you mean by moles? Now, you mean like dark spots? Uh, like hyperpigmentation spots? I was living spots? in a house that had black mold. Oh, mold. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying moles. Okay, I got you oh, now. I'm sorry. Mold. Oh, no, I apologize. Yeah. I, I didn't hear you. Mold. Okay, now, yeah, yeah. So you, you're, you're, you're living in an area where there's a lot of mold? I was living in Austin where there was a lot of mold. Okay, okay, gotcha. And I moved gotcha. back home to, to Colorado to... Live in a drier climate. Yes, I don't blame you. That's why I live here. And I have to go back to Austin. And okay. I'm concerned about how to protect myself. While yes, I'm there. that's a great question. Uh, continue what you're doing. Okay, that's first and foremost. Get yourself. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're using probiotics and good bacteria, which you probably are already doing, and up yep. the fermented food. Mold is oh, a yeah. fungus. Mold, uh, and obviously you know that mold is a fungus, mm-hmm. and the fungus live in in balance with bacteria. The way you fight fungus is by making sure your immune system is strong, and that's mostly housed in the intestine with the microbiome, with the, with the good bacteria. Keep your sugar intake lower. Make sure you're using immune-boosting nutrients like vitamin C and zinc and selenium and vitamin A. Keep, you're totally on the right track, Barbara. You're doing everything correctly. And, I, and don't worry about the genetic testing at all. Just keep, what you're do, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you've, you're 54, so you've probably been, your body's been subject to abuse for who knows how many decades, right? You are so mm-hmm. on the right track, Barbara. Just keep doing what you're doing. If you're not on the Healthy Star Pack, you might want to throw that in. And then, of course, I'm sure you're already doing it, but probiotics and fermented foods. And God bless you. I've got to move on. I want to get a couple more calls. Right, thanks so very much. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for your advice or your uh, words of wisdom there and also for the uh, tip on the book. All right, Robert in Ontario. Oh, shuck. That's all the time we have for today. I am sorry, and I just hung up on Robert. Robert, I apologize, but we're just out of time. And again, I apologize for leaving you guys on hold, but you got to call in early on the bright side. Uh, We get a a full board really quickly. Anyway, tomorrow we'll continue talking about... Uh, vegetarian uh, about vegetables I you know I you need the meat you need the animal foods that's for sure but there is uh, no way you're gonna be healthy unless your most of your calories are coming from vegetation and we'll talk about how to access the nutrients from from uh, from vegetables especially if you're a woman going through menopause or or your perimenopausal all right check out my website brightsideben.com as well as our truth skin health products check out our five percent retinol five percent gel And uh, that's all the time we have for today. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.